The fast moving developments in the coronavirus outbreak. A short time ago, two more deaths announced and the State Department issuing an extraordinary travel warning. Good evening. Within the past couple of hours, the Italian Prime Minister has announced restrictions on movement across the entire country in the most drastic response yet to the spread of coronavirus. The measures include a ban on all public gatherings and all schools and universities will be closed. However, current global circumstances suggest it's likely that this virus will cause a pandemic. In that case, risk assessment would be different and new strategies tailored to local circumstances would need to be implemented to blunt the impact of the disease and further slow the spread of the virus. The world is in a panic. Almost every corner of the world is affected by what is being called a pandemic or global epidemic. Now, preventive measures are being taken so people are safe. Even government agencies have warnings and instructions to protect citizens and save their lives. Well, how about saving our souls? It's obvious that everyone wants to be saved from viruses, dangers, and calamities. And so all the more then, everyone would want to be saved from an eternal punishment appointed at the end of the world. Everyone wants to be saved, but the real question is, does God want everyone to be saved? I'm Richard Watko. That's what we're discussing today on the Iglesia Ni Cristo International Edition. Joining us in this week's discussion is Brother Randy Weir from Quezon City, Philippines, Brother Phil Velasquez from London, and Brother Jovin Cipillo Jr. from Washington, D.C. Welcome to the program, brothers. Now, in just a matter of weeks, there have been what has been called a moral panic or public fear that everyone wants to be saved from. And when it comes to saving their souls, well, how many people do you think are sure that they will be saved? We'll start with you, Brother Phil. Well, Brother Richie, judging how people are not panicking, it seems like many are confident that they will be saved come the Day of Judgment. So our next question is, how do they know that? How does one know for certain that they're going to be saved on what the Bible calls the Day of Judgment? People might say that they're sure of salvation, but what's the basis of them saying that? Where did they get what they are saying that they're sure of salvation? Well, people might have said to them that they will be saved, that they will uh, be able to reach the promise of salvation. But it might turn out that what they were told was not the truth at all, but actually a lie, brothers. That's true, Brother Joven, and no one would agree that their faith is based on a lie. So our study today is very important. The basis of our study will not be on anyone's own opinion. What we need to do, and this is what we will do, is to consult God's words written in the Bible. Our faith should be founded on the right basis so that we can be sure that we are not being deceived and that also that the knowledge that we have in life and even our condition when the appointed time comes are all according to God's will for us to be saved on the day of judgment. Now, before we answer the question that we posed earlier, does God want everyone to be saved, we first have to ask, to be saved from what? What is salvation? From what do people need to be saved from? Well, we can read that answer, dear brothers and dear viewers, here in the Holy Scriptures from the book of Romans. The chapter is 5 and the verse is 9. This is what we can read. Therefore, since we are now justified, acquitted, made righteous, and brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood, how much more certain is it that we shall be saved by Him from the indignation and wrath of God? What is it that we need to be saved from? Well, salvation is from the wrath of our Lord God. Well, thank you, Brother Randy. That's clear now that we have read that. So our question is, why is he so angry? Why is it that the Bible says that he has wrath? Because, Brother uh, Richie, in Romans 5.12, people have committed sin. They've disobeyed the commandments of our Almighty God. Okay, Brother Phil, uh, that's true. So why isn't God just angry with the people that committed sin? Why is it that He has wrath for people in the whole world? 
see, that's, that's a good question, brother. The problem is that everybody has committed sin, according to Romans 6.23, which is why everyone is under the wrath of our Almighty God, and everyone has to pay the price of the sin that they've committed. So, we do understand we have all committed sin, we've broken God's laws and commandments, and we can see how it does make sense that He will be angry. So, let's learn how severe is His anger, how severe is His wrath, and when will that ultimately be felt? Well, Brother Ricci, to answer that question, uh, the, the wrath and the anger of our Almighty God was actually described here uh, in 2 Peter 3, 7, and the verse is 10. But by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up, reserved for fire, being kept until the, the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly people. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will vanish, pass away, with a thunderous crash, and the material elements of the universe will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and the works that are upon it will be burned up. So this present world, as mentioned by the Bible, and the heavens will be destroyed by the fiery judgment of the Lord our God to punish everyone for their sins and for all their wrong wrongdoings, their transgressions against the Lord our God. Now, as we just heard from what Brother uh, Jovin said, we can see what will happen. Now, there's a lot of people nowadays that say that, well, you know, science and technology is so advanced, so maybe somehow people can figure a way to save themselves. Is that possible? It's only natural for a human being that when there is a problem that they're facing or any kind of danger, to look for a way to protect themselves, to relieve themselves from uh, any harm or danger. But when we're talking about being saved from the day of judgment, the wrath of God, there is nothing that we have of our own, whether it's power, influence, or wealth that can save us on that day. For in fact, as the prophets of the Lord God have foretold, for example, in Zephaniah 1, 14 to 15, and also verse 18, the day of the Lord, it's coming, and it's coming quickly. That is what everyone needs to prepare for and to be saved. Everything's going to be consumed. Even our wealth will be consumed in the fiery judgment of God. The power and influence of an individual will not deliver them on that day. So it's clear. Thank you, Brother Randy. It's clear that everyone needs salvation. They need to be saved. But just because they need it or just because they want it, does it mean that they will automatically have it? What's vital or necessary when it comes to salvation? Are there things that pertain to salvation that must be known, accepted by a person in order to be saved? In our discussion, we now know and understand that the eminent danger is because of God's wrath due to people breaking His laws, let's find out if God wants everyone to be saved. Brothers, does God want everyone to be saved? Well, uh, Brother Richie, the uh, answer can be found here in 1 Timothy 2, 3, and uh, 4. This is, this is what Apostle Paul teaches. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So the answer to your question earlier on, Brother Richie, is yes, God wants everyone to be saved. You know, it doesn't matter the color of your skin, where were you born, your educational attainment, how much money you have. God wants everyone to uh, be saved come the day of judgment. So since God wants everyone to be saved, right, that's clear. That's the biblical truth. So... Does that mean everyone will be saved? Well, Brother Richie, to answer that question, actually, it really depends upon the individual. Because when it comes to salvation, there is a condition being set by our Almighty God. And that condition, according to what was read a while ago, is that for people to come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay, so what is the truth? And how can one come to the knowledge of it since that is the requirement? that God has said in order to be saved? Well, brothers, for a person to know the truth, which is the basis of salvation, Apostle Paul also teaches us where that truth can be found. 
Let's read here in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, and this is what is written. You know how, when you were a small child, you were taught the Holy Scriptures, and it is these that make you wise to accept God's salvation by trusting in Christ Jesus. The whole Bible was given to us by inspiration from God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and helps us to do what is right. The truth needed for our salvation, it's found right here in the Holy Scriptures or the Bible. Now that we know that that's where the truth is, you know, it's in the Holy Scriptures and the Bible, what's the value of learning that? Uh, as we read, these words or teachings of God that are written in the Scriptures will make us wise to accept the salvation of our Lord God. What else uh, can benefit from the Holy Scriptures written in the Bible? Yeah, Brother Richie, the Bible will also teach us uh, what is useful. It will teach us what is true or the truth. And as a result, it will expose what is a lie or false. It will also... Uh, straighten us out you know people need to consult the bible and not just anyone's opinion or conjecture because that would put us in the danger of just following whatever comes to mind uh you know in anyone so what will straighten us out are the words of god written in the bible because it is the truth and it will help us do what is right uh, we learn that uh, we will not fall prey to what is false but be in the truth We'll be sure of salvation and not of perdition. But some might say, everyone nowadays can get the Bible. So why isn't everyone, they're not coming to the knowledge of the truth. You know, there are so many religions to say, today. They all say that they follow the Bible. Yet they all have different faiths. They all have different beliefs of what one needs to do to be saved. So this is the... New question we pose, what dangerous thing is happening today that is putting people more at risk to God's wrath rather than his mercy to be saved? Brother Richie, that danger is being explained by Apostle Paul. Uh, I'm going to read this time uh, what's written here in 1 Timothy 6, 3 down to 4. Some people will teach things that are false. Those people will not agree with the true teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they will not accept the teaching that agrees with the true way to serve God. Those people are proud of what they know, but they understand nothing. Those people are sick with a love for arguing and fighting about words. So what the Bible uh, mentioned is so clear. Yes, it's true. There are those people who are trying to claim that they are preaching what is true, but actually, Brother Richie and their brothers, they are preaching what is actually false. Now, Brother Joven, we can see that biblically that is true. They are preaching what is false, but no one will ever say what they are preaching is false. So what makes what they're preaching false? The determining factor as to what is true or false is the Bible. What makes it what they're saying is false? What they are teaching, as what the Apostle Paul says, does not agree with the true teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ and the teachings of Christ we can find written here in the Bible. So why would people do that? Why would people use the Bible, hold the Bible, read the Bible, yet teach something that is not written in the Bible? Well, the Apostle Paul answered that, Brother Richie. Apostle Paul said, those people are proud of what they know, but they understand nothing. What is it that they don't understand? What is written in the Bible? Because when it comes to serving God, there is only one true or right way of doing it. We cannot and should not invent our own way of serving God. The true way must be in accordance to the truth, the Word of God written in the Holy Scriptures. That's what we have to follow. That's why not all religions and uh, what religions uh, are saying uh, is the right way of serving our Lord God. 
that's not what is truly of our Lord God. The, there are religions that teach not the truth, but actually what is wrong, what is false and contrary to what the Bible says. That's what people must be careful of. That's a danger that they need to be saved from also. So why is it that they would do that? Well, why are there people that would teach something different than what is actually written in the Bible? It's because, um, you know, it says it in the verse that was read earlier on, you know, these people are proud of what they know. They're proud of their own knowledge. And I'm sure many of our viewers can attest, many preachers today, they preach, they speak off the top of their head. What they teach is what they know based upon their own knowledge and not upon the knowledge or word of our Almighty God. So when they're preaching and they say they're preaching the will of God, do they really know the will of God? Because as we heard from the verse that was read, uh, they understand nothing. If they had understanding, they would not be teaching what is false. Hence, it's important for people to really examine. One cannot allow that. They just simply follow or are members of any religion that render a service to God. The question is, will that bring them salvation? For one to be saved in their service, he renders to God, he must know the truth because there are those who teach what is false and not the truth from God. The Bible will give us more insight as we continue with our discussion right here on the Iglesia Ni Cristo International Edition. Stay with us. Welcome back. As we continue with our discussion, we were discussing why it is necessary to know the truth that is in the Bible. And before we go any further, let's take a look at this story of a woman who was so disappointed in so many religions who couldn't deliver biblical truth that she almost gave up on God altogether. My childhood, mostly pretty lonely. My mom, um, she believed in God, and um, she was raised, raised Catholic. So all her um, beliefs were transferred to us, mostly like tradition. I passed it on to my son and then my daughter. And like I said, it, it was more like a tradition. It wasn't because we actually believe in it. After a while, I started um, questioning a, a lot of things. I was questioning a lot, like why they said that God was three persons in one. They call it the Trinity. And a lot of people at the church kept telling me, um, that's the way it is. God uh, came to this world. Then I started questioning um, why the priest did he marry? And I asked three, three priests. Why priests cannot get married when uh, in, in the Bible doesn't say anything that they couldn't get married? The answer, oh, because that way we could concentrate in the Bible, the, the words in the Bible. And I didn't have no answer for my questions. and feeling empty, it's horrible. Because you don't care about anything. My daughter was shy. It was hard for her to make friends. I started seeing these changes in her every time that she would talk to me about the services or the Bible studies, what she learned, what she heard. I could see like this light coming up from inside her and every time she smiled it was like this radiance around her and I said, what's so different about this church? What is making that difference in her? And I met some of the brothers and sisters and she was right, they were nice, they treated me like part of the family. And I met the minister, and he was like everything that he was saying, it was 
to work towards me. And with everything that he mentioned, I was like, <sighs> and I started crying. And I kept saying inside me, I say, oh God, please forgive me because all the teachings that I have from, from I was a child, they were completely wrong. And I just started crying and crying. And then he mentioned the blood, food made out of blood. Mm, I couldn't take it. Because in Puerto Rico, we grew up eating um, uh, blood sausage. That did it for me. I was like, God forgive me because I ate so much of that. And I didn't know it was a sin. I made so many mistakes in my life and I didn't want to make any more. As we saw Sister Soul's story, there are people who teach what is false. There are preachers who teach a message that is not based on the words of God in the Bible. And that is very dangerous because if it is not the truth, then the condition that God has set for salvation is not fulfilled. People must need, people must know the truth to be saved. I want to turn to uh, our brothers here because all of us, we all uh, teach uh, Bible study lessons to those that are, uh, they want to know the truth. Do you have any of your Bible students that can identify with uh, Sister Soul's story? Uh, yes, brother. You know, with uh, 40 years of uh, experience already in the ministry, We've come across a lot of uh, Bible students, those who got introduced to the church. In fact, even last night, uh, I was introduced to a young man. He has been introduced to the church. He's been going through the Bible studies, and he's been quite enlightened. He couldn't uh, uh, really understand why, though he was an active Protestant before, uh, he got disenchanted with uh, not finding the truth before. But then when he got introduced to the church, and began attending the Bible studies, uh, a, a whole new horizon was opened up to him. And as he said, uh, there is no regrets in coming to know the truth, but only great happiness and inner peace and contentment because now he knows knowing the truth, he's going to be saved. Thank you, Brother And we can see that, right, Brother Randy, that there are people that their whole lives, they thought they were religious, they thought they were, uh, they were in the truth, and then all of a sudden, uh, they realize when they hear what's actually written, that is very different from, uh, from what they've been taught uh, all along. Just as our sister had said, is, uh, she was so sad. There is gr great regret in doing things that are not based upon the biblical truth. But then once one knows the truth, you know, yes, there's, they were sad for doing all the things that were wrong before. But then now that they've come to know the truth and they have forgiveness, they're on the path going to salvation. That joy is overcoming to them. So we can see how we're able to meet many people who they're looking for salvation. They're looking for the truth. And us teaching that to them is not really just a, a personal thing that we want to do. As we have learned that that is the desire. That's what God wants. Earlier, we learned that although God does want everyone to be saved, He has a condition needed to be met first in order to receive that promised salvation. Now, we are discussing why it is necessary to know that, know the truth that God wants people to uh, be saved, the truth that is in the Bible. So what is uh, some of the truths that we need to know? You know, brother, that's, it, it's so important to know what the truth written in the Bible is, is because, you know, there are so many people out there who are teaching, you know, what is false. And remember, uh, God doesn't discriminate. It doesn't matter, you know, what race you are, what color your skin is, your edu educational attainment. His requirement is for people to know the truth. If you don't know the truth because you've believed in these people who are teaching what is false, then you do not fulfill that requirement for salvation salvation is taken from you. So because people need to know the truth to be saved, 
Well, let's find out what are some truths written in the Bible that are necessary to be known and believed in in order to be saved. Brother Phil, what are some of these truths? Well, uh, Apostle Paul makes it clear here in uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3, and uh, 6. This is what he says. This kind of prayer is good and it pleases God, our Savior. God wants everyone to be saved and to know the whole truth, which is there is only one God and Christ Jesus is the only one who can bring us to God. Jesus was truly human and he gave himself to rescue all of us. God showed us this at the right time. So you see, in order to be saved, it's not enough just to know you know a portion of the truth one needs to know as we read the whole truth not just half the truth but the whole truth and one of those truths that we read a very important one is that there is only one god but how about those that teach and believe that god has three persons and each are god well, that is a common belief today, uh, Brother Richie, but then, but then that would go uh, against the teaching of God in the Bible. That would be false because in the Bible, it clearly says there that there is only one God, not two, not three. So if there is only one God, which that really is the biblical truth, then the next obvious question is who? Who is the one and only true God? Well, Brother Richie, that's a very good question and... Uh... Actually, our Lord Jesus Christ gave an answer to that through what's written in the book of John in chapter 17, 1 down to 3, and this is what we can read. Jesus said these things, then raising his eyes in prayer, he said, Father, it's time. Display the bright splendor of your son, so the son in turn may show your bright splendor. You put him in charge of everything human, so he might give real and eternal life to all in his charge and this is real and eternal life that they know you the one and only true god and jesus christ whom you sent so it was so clear from the statement of our lord jesus christ beloved brothers the one and only true god is none other than the father in heaven now that is what our lord jesus christ said and what is the proof of that he said that they know you, the Father, the one and only true God. Now, there's something that we need to understand. There's, there's an importance of us believing in the only one true God. And what is the value and importance of believing in the only one true God? According to our Lord Jesus Christ himself, this is the real and eternal life that they know you, the only true true God. What you mentioned, Brother Jovan, we know is the truth, one of the major truths needed for salvation, because as you mentioned, it is the one, it is so that one can receive the eternal, the eternal life. But is that it? What else is the truth that people need to know for salvation? Well, here inside the Church of Christ, the Iglesia Cristo, we firmly uphold the truth that is taught by our Lord Jesus Christ, that there is only one God, the Father in heaven, for the attainment of eternal life. But as the Apostle Paul said, he also taught, and Christ Jesus is the only one who can bring us to God. So you see, that's why our Lord Jesus Christ cannot be God, because we must be brought to God by our Lord Jesus Christ. So you see, that uh, belief that Jesus Christ is God is wrong. There's only one God and He is the Father. The Bible teaches us in the verses that we read, Jesus was truly human. That's the truth written in the Bible. Our Lord Jesus Christ is different from our Almighty God. Well, that's true, Brother Phil. And to show that our Lord Jesus Christ is truly different from the true God, uh, the Bible tells us that He is the Son of God. That's what we can read in Matthew 3 and the verses 17. The Father calls our Lord Jesus Christ as His beloved Son. And if we're going to read Acts 2 and the verses 36, God makes Jesus or made Jesus as Lord and Christ. The apostles also teach, uh, teach us that our Almighty God Himself made Him 
a Savior as well. Now, these attributes were given to our Lord Jesus Christ, but we need to understand that these attributes does not mean or do not mean that our Lord Jesus Christ is the true God, brothers. Now, brothers, although what we are discussing really is what is written in the Bible, there might be some people that when they hear what we're saying, they might be angry. They, it, it, might, uh, it might offend them because they highly regard our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course they should. So if Jesus Christ is not God, what is his significant role in our salvation? Well, we'd like to make it very clear that although inside the Church of Christ, we do not believe nor teach that Jesus Christ is God. We're not belittling him. We exalt, we praise, we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. But our faith is based upon what the Holy Scriptures teaches. The apostles also make it clear for us that as God made Jesus uh, Lord, Savior, uh, he also made him the only mediator between the one God and mankind. But yet, our Lord Jesus Christ is a human being. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. God wants everyone to be saved and to know the whole truth, which is, there is only one God, and Christ Jesus is the only one who can bring us to God. Jesus was truly human and gave himself to rescue all of us. Jesus, yes, as the Bible said, Jesus is a human being. That's one of the truths that's written in the Bible that God wants us to know in order to be saved. There's only one God and there's one man who will bring us to that one God, Jesus Christ, who is truly human. Now, Brother Randy, clearly you just read that Jesus Christ is truly human. So what is another evidence? What's another proof that he is human, his, uh, of his humanity? I mean, everybody knows that our Lord Jesus Christ died. He died on the cross. So why does that prove that he's human and not God? Well, I mean, in, in 1 Timothy 1.17, it says that God is immortal, meaning he cannot die, he has never died, and he will never die. Whereas our Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. And that's correct, Brother Phil and uh, dear brothers. Uh, to further prove that uh, our Lord Jesus Christ is different from the true God, uh, the apostles explained in Ephesians chapter 1, 20 down to 22, uh, that our Almighty God rose our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that he was exalted by the Lord our God, gave him authority above all people, the powers, and uh, all kinds of authority. Now, all those things were given by our Almighty God to our Lord Jesus Christ. But in spite of all our Almighty God had done for the Lord Jesus, we should consider the example our Lord Jesus Christ uh, set for us. Uh, Apostle Paul tells us in uh, Philippians chapter, uh, chapter 2, 5, and 8 uh, that Jesus had the attitude of humility and was obedient uh, to our Almighty God even to the point of His death, uh, His death on the cross. Okay, brothers, clearly the biblical truth is that there's only one God that is the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ is not God. But why do people believe in other gods? A different number of gods, uh, gods with different names. Does the Bible mention anything about this? And if so, would that mean that that's also true? Well, Brother Ricci, that's true. That's what we can see with uh, the world today. Uh, many people are preaching uh, uh, many other gods aside, aside from the true God being taught by the Bible. But although that's what we can see happening in the world today, there is this biblical truth that people should understand. And this is what we can read in the book of 1 Corinthians 8, 5 down to 6. There may be so-called gods both in heaven and on earth. And some people actually worship many gods and many lords. But for us... There is one God, the Father, by whom all things were created and for whom we live. 
And there is one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom all things were created, and through whom we live. So on these verses, we can see that there are some who call themselves as Christians, but in truth, they do not realize that there is only one God, because they believe in the Trinity, or the deity of Christ and the Holy Spirit, as God. And there are even those who still worship and use idols. Now, Brother Randy, what, what you're mentioning, uh, is it just uh, a coincidence or maybe something that you're observing uh, personally? Or is it actual biblical evidence, uh, a fulfillment of a prophecy of what is written in the Bible that some have unknowingly strayed from the truth? Well, let us read what the Bible says. Apostle Paul will continue to teach us. We read him uh, here in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, the verses 6. Let's continue and read in verse 7, and this is what is written. However, not all Christians realize this. Some are accustomed to thinking of idols as being real. So when they eat food that has been offered to idols, they think of it as the worship of real gods and their weak consciences are violated. So what Brother Randy mentioned earlier, it is a biblical truth. Now to, to summarize what we've discussed so far, we've learned that there is only one true God. That is the Father. That's the biblical truth. Only one God and the belief of others that there are many gods is false. But what's the problem that we can also see, the Bible says, not all Christians believe this. There are those who call themselves Christians, so-called Christians, but do not believe the truth written in the Bible. They have been taught and believe what is false. Brother Phil, why is it wrong to believe that Christ is God? Uh, why should we not believe that? Well, we can read in the same verse again. We can, uh, we can pull out from the same verse that we've been reading, uh, brother. Look, it says here in 1 Timothy 2 and 5, Put briefly, the truth is this. There is only one God, and there is only one person who can act as a go-between between God and man. That person is the man whom we know as Christ Jesus. It's written very clearly here. Your question, was, uh, uh, you, your question was, why is it wrong to believe that Jesus Christ is the true God? Because our Lord Jesus Christ acts as the go-between between us and our Almighty God. So Jesus Christ is different to our Almighty God to whom He acts as the go-between. They are different. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not God. It's very clear, written in the Holy Scriptures. Dear friends, knowing the truth that is written in the Bible is the condition God has given for salvation. Here is part of the truth. There is only one God. He is the Father. Jesus Christ is a man, a human being, and not God. Open your Bibles and read it for yourself. That's what the Bible says. This is the truth that you will need to be saved. But what other truth is written in the Bible that we all need to know, believe in, and obey for salvation? Stay with us. And the Bible will answer that question when we return. Welcome back as we continue with our discussion concerning God's desire for everyone to be saved. But there's a condition such as to know the truth. One true God, the Father, Jesus Christ, is a human being, the only mediator. We've learned those truths. But Brother Randy, what other truth? is written in the Bible that we all need to know and accept in order to be saved. Well, Brother Richie and dear viewers, that truth was spoken by our Lord Jesus Christ. And what he said can be read here in the Gospel of John. The chapter is 10, the verses are 7 and 9. Let us read. So Jesus spoke again. In very truth, I tell you, I am the door of the sheepfold. I am the door. Anyone who comes into the fold through me will be safe. So that sheepfold or the flock one has to enter. So brothers, according to the Bible, what is that? What is referred to as the fold 
or the flock that Christ is commanding all who want to be saved that they have to enter into? Well, Brother Richie and their brothers, to answer that question, the flock being referred to is none other than the church of Christ. And this is what the apostles teach us in the book of Acts chapter 20, and the verse is 28. This is what we can read. Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers, to feed the church of Christ, which he has purchased with his blood. So for people to receive salvation, they can never avoid to enter the true church. And according to the apostles, the name of the true church is none other than the church of Christ. This is also one of the truths that one must believe in and obey so that they may be certain of receiving the promise of salvation. Now, some might say, now, although it does mention, it's written that the church of Christ will be saved, but if they're not members of the church of Christ, uh, they'll be saved too. Uh, will people be saved if they are outside uh, the Church of Christ? Is, is that also a, a biblical truth, brothers? Well, Brother Richie, that is a common belief amongst many people. But then again, we are not uh, concerned about opinion. We're concerned about the truth written in the Bible. So let's read here in 1 Corinthians 5, 12 to 13. This is what Apostle Paul says about those who are outside of the church. He says here, for I have no obligation to judge those who are outside of the church of Christ. God is the one who will judge those who are outside the church. The scriptures commands us, you must take away the evil person who is among you. You know, uh, Brother Richie, we don't want to hurt other people's feelings. That's not our intention here. But we cannot avoid echoing the truths that are written in the Bible. And it's clear what's written in the Bible. Those who are outside of the church will be judged by God. They won't be saved. So because it's written in the Bible that one must become a member of the church of Christ in order to be saved, that is also what we teach inside the church. One must be a member of the church in order to receive salvation. That is the truth that God wants us to know. That is why the apostles have an appeal to all who are listening to our discussion today. That appeal of the apostles we could read, as written here in the book of Hebrews, the chapter is 2 and the verse is 3. Please listen. The salvation that was given to us is very great. So surely we also will be punished if we live like this salvation is not important. It was the Lord Jesus who first told people about this salvation. And the people who heard him proved to us that this salvation is true. This salvation that we're talking about today in our discussion, the Bible says, is very great. If one will treat it as something not important, what did the Bible say? Such will be punished. That's why, as we have spoken, Jesus was the first as our Savior, who told us about it. And it is his apostles who proved this salvation, and its conditions are true. We need to listen. We need to accept and believe what these conditions are in the truth of the Bible. We need to obey them. Well, that is correct, Brother Randy and uh, dear brothers. There's no better time than now to accept these biblical truths. Obey them to receive the promised salvation. Life is so short and fragile, and it's being proven by the, the current condition, the situation of the world today. Christ is coming soon, and uh, the signs are being seen and witnessed by the people right now. Now, God wants all of us to be saved, but He has told us the condition. It is for us to come to the knowledge of the truth. That is why also the apostles exhort us, and this is what we can read in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and the verse is 2. For he says, in the time of favor of an assured welcome, I have listened to and heeded your call, and I have helped you on the day of deliverance, the day of salvation. Behold, now is truly the time for a gracious welcome, 
and acceptance of you from God. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Uh, you know, in our discussion uh, today, we've been talking about how it's God's, our almighty God's desire for everyone to be saved by coming to know the truth. You know, this is also the desire of our executive minister, our beloved brother, Eduardo V. Manalo. And this is the reason why he's doing everything to get these truths out there to our friends, to the viewers out there today. The, the truth about the one true God, the truth about our Lord Jesus Christ and the church that our Lord Jesus Christ died for, the church of Christ. You know, the end of the world is near the day of judgment and this is proven by the events that are happening around the world today. And that's why, you know, we are inviting our uh, friends, our viewers watching us uh, on this program, ask your questions. And our promise to you is that you will always get uh, the answers to your questions straight from the Bible, not from our opinion, but from the truth written in the Holy Scriptures. So to summarize what we have discussed, we asked the question right in the beginning, does God want everyone to be saved? The answer is yes. For those that are watching this, does God want you to be saved? The answer is yes, but it is up to you. Because our God has that condition that one has to come to the knowledge of the truth and accept it. We have heard the truth today. We have heard that there is only one true God, the Father. We have heard about our Lord Jesus Christ him being the mediator. And we have heard that the truth is, if one wants to be saved, they have to enter into the church of Christ. We have heard that from the Bible. So I would like to thank uh, our brothers that joined us today, Brother Randy Weir in the Philippines, Brother Philip Velasquez in UK, and Brother Jovin Cepillo Jr. there in Washington, DC, for giving us Bible-based answers so that, as the Apostle said to the members of the Church of Christ, you will be ready to speak up and tell anyone who asks why you are living the way that you are. That's in 1 Peter 3.15. Well, that does it for us here on the Iglesia Ni Cristo International Edition. We hope you'll join us again next time. I'm Brother Richard Watko, and thanks for watching.